you have told me before that I need to be quiet and meditate. And I, I try Not all that. the time, just sometimes. Well, just I once re- a day for 15 or 20 minutes. Okay. Could you clarify, because I've heard you say, as I've listened to things on YouTube, that the gratitude or appreciation is actually a higher vibration than meditation because, because there's more momentum in it. Say that all again. That was twisted. <laughs> say what you just said. Because what we say is appreciation is a higher vibration than gratitude. Because in appreciation... There's no awareness of what you've overcome. In gratitude, I'm grateful that I no longer can't pay my bills. It doesn't have to be that way, but often when you're grateful, you're grateful that this is no longer in your life. Where appreciation is a higher vibration because it contains less resistance. Meditation is resistance free also what we've said is we would rather see you in appreciation than in meditation because in appreciation you are alert and in the active mode of being able to receive an impulse or an idea where in meditation you've quieted your mind enough that even though an idea comes it comes with less momentum let's clarify that this is really good let's say that You've been focused upon something and it's something that doesn't feel good and you've got a lot of momentum going. You've been talking to people about it and there's quite a bit of momentum going about it. And you'd like to have different thoughts about it. You'd like to feel differently about it. But it's difficult for you to do that because you've activated so much about what you don't want that there's a lot of momentum about what you don't want. So when you think about this subject, you get what you've been thinking about and so the momentum just gets more and more and more. You're following us? So then let's say that you decide that you will meditate. And so... The next morning when you awaken before all this momentum has really gotten strong, you sit and you manage to quiet your mind. You focus upon a sound in the room, maybe the air conditioner, it doesn't matter what it is, but you focus upon something that isn't very interesting but that does hold your attention and you manage to quiet your mind so that you feel that detachment that our friend was talking about earlier. And in the process of that, since there's no thought active, then there's no resistant thought active and your vibration rises. Well, as your vibration rises, now you have access to pure positive thoughts but there's not much momentum about these positive thoughts because you have quieted your mind you've slowed your mind so that you're not in vibrational sync with what you don't want but you're not in a place where you could really receive something like we're delivering to Esther right now you're not up to speed with it there's no resistance hear this it's new There's no resistance in your vibration, but you're not up to speed with what your inner being would want to give you about all of that. You're not up to speed with all of it. So then you move into your day. You become more active with your mind. You begin thinking about things that you appreciate. You begin getting up to speed. And now later in the day when your momentum is faster, now the benefit of that meditation then kicks in where you receive an idea and because you're up to speed, you receive the idea. Does that make sense to you? So we're talking about two things. We're talking about the tuning, which is resistance or not resistance. And then we're talking about staying there long enough that there is momentum. Momentum and law of attraction are the same word, really, because what you focus upon is going to garner more and more and more momentum. So then is meditation necessary, that quiet meditation necessary in addition to appreciation? Because I feel like I regularly go into a mode of appreciation. And and because then that is such a high... We would say yes for this reason. Okay. For this reason and maybe only for this reason. Because now, if you've been listening to us for a while, you are at the place of trying to figure out for yourself what receptive mode you're in. And we've watched Esther. Now, Esther's been flowing with us for a long time, and she is often in a state of appreciation. But there was so much benefit to her when she sat to meditate with the singular intent of just quieting her mind completely and allowing her vibration to rise, because then the first thought that occurred to her when she came out of meditation, she knew for sure where it came from. Meditation is a tool 
that will help you to know, help you to know. You see, we can talk to you all day and we're happy to do that. And we can tell you what we know, but until you have had the experience where you have sat to meditate on purpose, it usually takes a few days for you to really know you've accomplished it. And you've quieted your mind and you know you did because you felt detached. You couldn't tell your nose from your toe. You know that you were in a state of detachment. And you didn't try to think thoughts. No thoughts came to you. You were just in a state of detachment. And then you came out of your meditation. And within a few seconds or maybe a minute or two of coming back into your focus, you got a really loud, clear idea about something. And you know for sure where that idea came from. And unless you have meditated, you don't know. Because you translate the ideas through your own thought process, through your own words, through your own vocabulary. How do you know what the source of what you're receiving is? It could be the spinoff of man's conscious thought. Or it could be the momentum from what you've been worrying about for a few days relative to some problem. You see? The only way that you can know for sure that that idea was a source-offered idea is if it comes to you from a state of quieted mind. Now, once you get that and you feel the content of it and you relate to the vibration of it and you feel the resonance of it, then yes, you can get there in the middle of anything. You'll even get good at having a negative thought and just easily letting it go and feeling the solution coming. In other words, we're not saying that you always need to meditate to stop the evil thoughts from flowing. That's not the point that we're making. We want you to be in control. You can listen to others talk about their experience. You can listen to us talking about the laws of the universe. You can listen to us talking about you relative to the laws of the universe. You can listen to the examples that we offer about Esther and others about the laws of the universe. But until you have personally had the experience of quieting your own mind and then receiving a thought and then experiencing the benefit of watching that idea that came to you evolve and translating into the solution that you've been asking for, then these are just so many words, like so many other words that you've heard in so many places, you see. Words don't teach, it's only life experience that teaches. And so, of course, appreciation is certainly better for you than feeling negative about something. Optimism is always better for you than pessimism. There are so many things. There are a lot of things that work in this way and this way. We want you to understand the laws of the universe. We want you to unequivocally understand that you are an extension of source energy and you can't know that through our words. You got to hook up with that source part of you and feel the resonance of what it feels like to be hooked up with that part of you before you know Otherwise, all you know is that Abraham seems to think they know. You see, you got to show yourself. You got to show yourself. And so the reason that we brought meditation back into the conversation after so many other things that we've talked about is because so many of our very well-meaning friends are giving lip service to this body of work. You talk about law of attraction, but you don't do anything about controlling your own point of attraction. You use the words, but you don't find the vibration. And then you begin to doubt yourself when there's no reason to doubt yourself. You're getting exactly what you're offering. And so once you get this and then you stop beating up on yourself and then you meditate and then you have some soft, gentle thoughts and those soft, gentle thoughts evolve into exactly what you want and you make the association between what you did to accomplish that. Now you've got it. Now you've got it. And you only have to get it once to be able to do it relative to anything. It's the same law. We enjoyed this. Thank you. Yeah, a lot. Hello, Abraham. About three years ago, I was introduced to your work, and I started filling in grids, and boy, did everything fill in. I'm talking to the detail and big. And one of the things that filled in, well, everything I asked for <laughs> filled in. But there's no ending point to that, is there? Because you keep asking, so it keeps filling in. Yeah. So there's never a point where you say, there, I'm done, ever. I thought so. Um, so I, I got all this stuff, and I'm like, wow, I'm really here. How cool is this? Did satisfaction come with the stuff? Because that's the point of it. 
the satisfaction came with knowing that the law of attraction and, and this information and this intention and this ease was all real. But what we mean is when the idea came, did it feel satisfying? And then when it evolved, did it continue to feel satisfying? And then when others joined it, did it continue to feel satisfying? Satisfaction is the indicator that you're staying true to what's in your vortex. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I ended up in this process of these things coming. Um, you haven't learning. ended up. You haven't ended up. Okay. Don't use a final word. It's a flawed premise. Thank you. I had more experience that caused me to put more in the vortex, and so there's more satisfaction still coming. That's a valid statement. But I ended up. That's not a valid statement because you're not ever going to have ended up. Thank you. I started trading the stock market because I got trained in the stock market and funded to trade the stock market. And there is almost nothing as direct as trading intraday and where you are in your vibration. Well, that's a flawed premise too. Everything is like that. That's not an exception. That's just another indicator. In other words, what you're saying is evidence comes faster, but you still want to look long-term, not short-term. If you get so short-sighted that you're taking score with every thought that you have, then... That is why I'm in the seat, because becoming very short-sighted, I'm like, I really, this is not working. You know, I, I could feel really great and be prepared and make a decision with really neutral feelings, no particular fear. Is what I'm doing in the trading, in the stock market, is the law of attraction that direct or it did is. I put it in already well, law of attraction is that direct it's really 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 precise but you don't need to hold yourself to those kinds of strict standards because you have so much leeway in all of this and the thing that we most want to say to you is that in a moment when it looks to you like it didn't go the way that you expected it to or wanted to the big bonus of that is is that your desire became greater so your potential becomes greater but in that moment it's very difficult for you to align with your potential again this is the conversation that we had several times already here today that you've got to put separation between the asking of the question and the receiving of the answer and that's the thing that you weren't letting yourself do you can reach the point where you can ask and receive and ask and receive and ask and receive and ask and receive but you see even what's going on right here and now Esther's receiving 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 Esther's not asking these questions Esther's vibration is not in sync with the question at all if it were she couldn't be receiving the answers in this way there is separation between the question and the answer and you've got to do that for yourself which means just slow down slow down the trading or slow down the asking you can't slow down the asking but you can be more sure of where you are before you act and sometimes people get addicted to the action itself rather than addicted to the resonance. You want to be addicted to the resonance, to the sureness, and then act. I see. I'm you, you do see. You do see that. Yeah. Does the system allow you that, to slow down in that way? Oh, sure. There's yeah. plenty of ways to engage. Yeah. Good. I'm not sure I have a um, formulated a question around the subject, because the subject... You know what your disappointment is? What? Your disappointment is that I thought I knew this stuff and I'm not getting the results that I want on all these important subjects. And your disappointment is that you're always going to be back in step one. That's your disappointment. You thought that you were just going to figure this out and you were never going to have contrast again. What that would mean, you didn't think it, but what that would mean is there's no more expansion. And that's why you use words like ended up, you see. So don't let that disappoint you. Just let yourself know that you're still fine-tuning and that there is so much more. So much more. Thank you.